planty people, I'm Krista with Botanical Bird and today I am going to talk about repotting. So I have this spider plant right here and I'm deciding to repot it because I've known for a while that it's needed it. It has a couple of um, roots coming out of the bottom and some of the roots are kind of coming out of the top too, if you can kind of see. There's some right there. And I've noticed that there's some browning growth. So I think that it's kind of just suffocating from lack of space and I wanna give it a new and bigger home so that its roots can grow and I can promote growth. So I wanna talk about a few different things in this video. I wanna talk about why you would repot, when to do it, and how. So first, why? As in this video, I need to repot this plant because it's getting too big for its pot. I want to promote growth and right now this plant needs more room for its roots. Other times it's because maybe you need to switch out the soil because you think your plant has pests and you want to get rid of the soil that might have pest eggs in it. Or maybe you, the soil is too moist when it gets shipped to you and you want to switch it out for drier soil or maybe that you have um, a better pot you wanna put it into, or you're potting up propagations that you've done. So there's lots and lots of different reasons that you would pot something. Generally, when a plant outgrows its pot, that's kind of the main reason to repot, but as I just listed, there are many, many reasons. So when? Generally, most people will tell you to repot a plant during the growing season, which is between spring and summer, and the reason for that is that it gives the plant a chance to recover from the stress of having its roots messed with. Generally, if you do that in the fall or the winter, it puts more stress on the plant, but in my personal opinion, it wouldn't do that much damage if you repotted at a different time of year. I guess I've just never encountered a situation in which I've needed to repot during the winter or the fall because plants aren't growing then and so, or at least not as much. And so um, I was very surprised. This spring was my first spring with this many plants and I had to repot like, it had to have been at least like 10 plants. It was crazy. I felt like every day I was like, oh great, now this plant needs to be repotted. Now this plant needs to be repotted. So that's generally during the spring or summer, the growing season. Also, you want to wait until the plant really needs it because as I said, repotting a plant stresses it out. And if you repot too soon, you're basically putting the plant in a bigger environment with more soil. And if it's not ready for it, then the soil holds more moisture than what the plant needs and you can give it root rot. So you don't want to repot a plant in a pot that's way bigger just because it's cute. You want to make sure that it's the right size for the pot. So I generally wait usually until there's a lot more roots coming out of the bottom than just the one I showed you. But this plant has been in this pot for a couple of years. And like I said, um, I've noticed that some of its leaves are browning toward the base instead of on the ends. And so I think it just needs more room. I kind of think it's suffocating itself, but I generally wait until there's more roots coming out of the bottom. I wouldn't wait for them to get like a foot long, but when I notice that there's lots of roots coming out of the bottom, that's generally when I do it. And actually I do see a lot of little roots too. That one is just the biggest one, the one I showed you. All right, and then how? So if you're repotting a plant that's in a nursery pot, I would generally start by squishing the sides. And a tip that I've learned from other plant people is that you generally don't wanna repot right after you've watered because the soil sticks to the roots more and it just makes it harder to repot. So generally you wanna repot when the soil is dry. So I would squish the sides of it. This is a ceramic planter, so that's not gonna happen. But then I might grab something to loosen up the soil. I have a soil scoop here. I might grab something to kind of loosen up the soil a bit because I wanna do as little damage to the plant as possible. And then I would kind of grab the base of the plant if possible and then flip it over. And I'm gonna flip it over in our new pot. And this is the new pot right here. And generally when you're picking a pot for your new plant, you want it to be two inches bigger in diameter than your old pot so that when you put the plant in it, there will be an inch of new space all the way around the plant. Let's see if I can successfully dump this. And kind of, I'm like gently wiggling the plant out 
I'm trying to be patient, remembering that this plant has been in here for a long time and it's made it its home. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so this is an example of a good time to repot this plant. You can see it's taken shape of the container it was in and you can see the roots have circled around the bottom and are kind of ready to have a bigger space. So lots of people, when they repot, they will undo all of the roots, get rid of all of the soil so they just have the root ball. And that's awesome. If you have the time, the patience, and the delicate hands to do that, that's great. I am not that delicate. And so I end up doing more harm to the plant than good because every time I do that, I'm gonna rip and break a bunch of roots, which will affect the plant, right? Because the roots are how it soaks up its nutrients or the water at least. And so um, I don't mess with the root ball when I'm repotting. I just stick this in the middle of the pot. But since I am, I'm gonna dump out what I poured in here. Since this is a ceramic pot that has glaze, this pot is not gonna absorb much moisture. And I know that spider plants like their soil to dry out between waterings. So what I'm gonna do is the first thing I'm gonna lay down in the pot is horticultural charcoal and what that does is it absorbs excess water because I don't want water to pool at the bottom of this I only was able to drill three holes in it when I got it it didn't have any holes any drainage holes and I wanted to initially have this as a cover pot so I would repot the plant in just a bigger nursery pot but I don't have any nursery pots that are the right size to fit in here without sticking out. So working with what I had, I decided that I would just drill holes in the bottom. And generally you want as many as possible, but I've drilled holes in pots before where I've then shattered the pot. So, and it took a long time because this is a really thick pot. So I figured three was good enough and I would line the bottom with horticultural charcoal. So that's what I'll do first. And some's gonna go through the drainage holes I just made, of course. Okay, and so I'm gonna stick the plant in the pot and kind of see how far down it sits without any soil in the bottom because I don't want it to like be buried in there. I might add like an inch of soil to the bottom because we also wanna give something for the roots to grow into. So you don't wanna stick the new plant just in the bottom of the pot because then the roots are gonna have the same problem that they did in the last pot. So I'm just scooping up soil and pouring it in here. I'm using the same soil from my pot last time. Some people might say to use fresh soil so that it can have fresh ingredients and nutrients, and that could totally be a thing. I just personally save soil when I can. All right. So I've added some soil to the bottom of here. Let's see if that's enough or if I need to add more. That's actually pretty good. Okay, so now what you do is you stick the plant in the middle as much as you can of the pot, and then we're gonna backfill all the negative space with soil. I'm gonna see if I can hold this up while I do it so you guys can actually see. Dun, dun, dun. This, I should have said, this is a bonny spider plant. There are spider plants where the leaves are straight. They're not curly. I personally like the curly look and all of its crazy babies. So I'm just gonna scoop up my Tupperware container full of soil and just put it in around the edges. Knowing that I put it in a pot that doesn't absorb water, I made the soil mix a bit more airy than I maybe would have if I had it in like a terracotta pot or something. So I added a lot of pumice or you can use perlite. I added mosquito bits to prevent fungus gnats from getting in there. I added bark and I even added, there's some horticultural charcoal mixed in with the soil as well. So all of those things are gonna help prevent the roots from just sitting in water. All right, and I gotta spread the soil around evenly around my plant here. And I usually try to leave a half of it, half an inch or an inch of space from the top level of soil and the top lip of the pot because when I water, sometimes it creates 
sometimes it kind of lifts up the soil a bit and I don't want water or soil to pour out when I'm watering a plant. Okay, and as I showed you before, this plant kind of had roots sticking out on the top. Ideally, I would like to cover that in this pot. The stalks were all kind of leaning off to the side because they couldn't stand up very well. And that might partially be due to the weight, due to the weight of the plant babies. <laughs> all right, I'm just spreading out the soil a bit. All right, I'm gonna set this down and see if I can't get these stalks to stand up a bit more. So here, whenever I repot a plant, it always kind of rocks a lean for a bit. And so I try to remedy that by putting more soil on the side where it's leaning toward and then packing it down a bit. I don't want to pack down the soil too much because then it'll kind of cut off oxygen to the roots and prevent water from being able to seep down there. And so I don't want to press it too hard, um, but firmly enough to try to help go against that lean that the plant has. Okay, so these are pretty much determined that they're gonna lean. So that's kind of as good as I can do right now. Maybe if I want, I could stick a stake in the middle. I might do that, stick a stake in the middle here. So let me show you. All of the, oh, it's so hard to show without spilling the soil. So basically all of, there's four, there's four main stems on this plant and all of them are leaning outward, which looks great from afar, but when you look in the plant, like directly from a top, it looks bald. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a small bamboo stake in the middle and then kind of tie the base of the stems to it to kind of lift them up and help take the weight off of their roots, I imagine is what's happening right now. Great. Um, and then most people after you repot will say to water your plant and that's because you want to once again kind of relieve the stress that the plant experiences during repotting. I sometimes don't water right away if I had just watered before because the roots just absorb water. This plant I haven't watered in a little bit because I knew I was going to repot it so I might water that soon. And then since I have this plant in a pot that has drainage holes, I need to make sure that I find a saucer that's an appropriate size to stick under it when I water it. Or I can just water it in the sink and then just wait long enough for the water to drain completely before I put it back. So I hope you enjoyed this repotting video, this how-to. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below and let me know what plants that you've repotted this growing season. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel Channel. It's Botanical Bird, and bird has a U in it, not an I. And follow my planty Instagram, which is at botanical underscore bird. Thanks, everyone, and remember, I'm rooting for you. Bye.